Hey, what's up, guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. Well, something as simple as one of those little fitness device watches that a lot of people wear when they go jogging and it monitors their heart rate, how far they've ran, has now been discovered to have been not only mapping the locations of people just jogging around the block around the world, but also the locations of military bases, both public and secret. So for those of you who don't know, just to start out with, um, many of you may have heard of something called a Fitbit. That's probably one of the most popular ones, and it's basically this little smart watch that you wear on your wrist, and again, it tracks your heartbeat, your eating, your sleeping. It's just an overall uh, fitness tool that many people are using today to help them get into shape. And obviously, with items such as this, it's got a tracker in it. It's got GPS. And like it or not, wherever you are, you're being monitored, your location is being linked up to a database. And up until now, it's been a pretty cool product, I would say. I know a lot of people that use them. And that was until recently when security concerns were raised after basically a heat map, a global heat map, was published by a company called Strava that detailed the movements that were tracked of some 27 million people who use its fitness device, either through its app or devices like Fitbits over the past two years. The heat map can show the locations and activities of people who use these devices and has now, unbeknownst to them, revealed the locations of soldiers and other people who are at these secret U.S. bases in sensitive areas, many of them unknown completely to the public. Now, whereas most areas in the U.S. and Europe are brightly lit by the paths of joggers, cyclists, and such, we have these dark areas of the deserts, with a few small spots of light appearing to show the locations of these U.S. facilities, both known and secret, and the movements of troops in and out of them. Now, zooming in on areas, as you're seeing in this image here, brings into focus the locations and the outlines of known U.S. military bases, presumably because the American troops and other personnel are using these fitness trackers as they move around. And so now, obviously, high-up officials are looking into the situation to determine how to respond, with one spokesman saying, quote, The DOD takes matters like these very seriously and is reviewing the situation to determine if any additional policy must be developed to ensure the continued safety of DOD personnel at home and abroad. So, yeah, a major misstep. And while I highly doubt that the powers that be weren't already collecting this global tracking data, much like they do on Google and Facebook to learn everything they possibly can about us, it looks like they got a bit of an egg on their face here as well with the revelation of their own people operating in these so-called black sites that we were never supposed to know existed. And well, obviously, I'm going to be digging in to see what I can find here with this tracking data that's hit the web. And if I have any new updates, obviously, I will follow up on it. And if you are a user of a Fitbit, well, maybe you want to take it off if you're going to a certain spot that maybe you don't want to be tracked to. In this day and age of interconnectivity, I think it'd be good to be able to do things for once, at least maybe a few times a day where you're not being monitored and giving the world data about your every single whereabout. So with that and other news, over the past month, there have been growing concerns about something called zombie deers, which is this new disease that has been reported in nearly 22 states that is affecting the local deer population. It's called zombie deer disease. And, well, scientists are now worrying that it could now jump into the air and infect humans, which is obviously terrifying. And so basically what this is, what they discovered, is that it's something called chronic wasting disease, which infects the central nervous systems of deer and elk, negatively affecting the spinal cord, brain, and other body parts until, well, they're goners. The disease, again, has been identified in at least 22 states and two Canadian provinces. And after further research of exposing monkeys to it, they found that five animals out of the 18 that they exposed it to tested positive for the condition. And so it's very similar to mad cow disease, if you guys remember that. 
And although no human cases of this chronic wasting disease have ever been reported, researchers at the Canadian Food Inspection Agency are now concerned that after seeing what happened to these monkeys, that it could now jump to humans. And you know what I have to say? It seems like many of these diseases in the past have only jumped to humans after we suddenly started messing with it, testing it on other animals like monkeys before someone got bit and the virus then spreads like wildfire, much like out of many of the horror movies you guys have maybe seen out there. Now, before we get too worried, it is important to note that these infected monkeys each spent a period of three years eating five kilograms of deer meat which is about equal to a human eating a 7-ounce steak every month. And although the monkeys were infected, there's no guarantee that this disease would behave the same way in humans. But still, I see bad things on the horizon once we start testing this on other animals, much like other diseases in the past. And while we're on the topic of zombies, many of you may not know this, but the US government is actually highly prepared for a zombie invasion with the DOD or Department of Defense having released a strategy to combat such a cataclysm. And while these potential opponents may be fictional, the military has taken it very seriously and says so in the first line of something they call the Counter Zombie Dominance Plan or Con Plan 888811, which states, quote, this plan is not designed as a joke. So it's a real plan, with origins that can be traced back to training exercises held in 2009 and 2010, during which young officers participated in the Joint Operational Planning and Execution System, which realized the potential upsides to planning for a hypothetical zombie attack. So, you know, um... We joke a lot about this stuff, but it's a real deal. The government has a plan for it. Again, con plan 8888-11. Look it up. In fact, I will put a link below to the unclassified uh, PDF that was released by the government a couple of years back under the noses of a lot of people. And so with that, lastly today, you guys may have heard the news about another one of these objects streaming into our atmosphere, uh, this time over Peru. Over the past couple of days, there's multiple videos of it online. Uh, a couple of people have posted about it. I wasn't going to because this, in fact, is not uh, an alien invasion. It's not a meteor. It's actually the re-entry of a Soviet SL-23 rocket that was used to put a satellite up into orbit in December of 2017. So this thing was orbiting around the Earth, it finally decayed, and this is the debris from the rocket heading back into the Earth's atmosphere, seen by multiple people over Peru, so uh, we can put this case to bed. This is definitely different from all of the meteors and strange flashes of light and mystery booms that we've been seeing around the world, and obviously I think it's good to make a distinction between the two. That way we can report on the more credible and the more mysterious happenings in our skies. And you can bet you'll see those right here on the channel. And real quick before we go today, I just want to show you guys a very interesting photograph that was emailed to me by a viewer that depicts this bird's eye view. So it was taken by an aircraft, photograph snapped of one of the most secretive bases in America. And no, I'm not talking about Area 51. Many have called this the real Area 51, and that, of course, I am talking about is the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, which is located in my home state of Ohio. And while most of the focus in ufology has been on Area 51 out in the Nevada desert, what many people don't know is that Wright-Patterson is just as intriguing and mysterious of any other government site. Uh, many in the know have said that Area 51 is actually more of a decoy than anything, and that's why it's kind of been pushed in the mainstream, basically to take everyone's focus off of Wright-Patterson, which is where the real stuff happens. And it was said that after the Roswell crash, the debris of what many people believe to be an alien spacecraft was transported to Wright-Patterson where it may be stored to this day. 
And so this photograph that, again, at the time it was taken back in 1947 was restricted. And if you guys will notice the date of this photograph, it was snapped only a few months before the infamous Roswell crash. The wreckage of which, again, was said to have been shipped to this very facility. So, yeah, uh, the viewer of this actually worked as a private contractor at the base for many, many years as an HVAC tech. So, he doesn't have any secret information, but one of the things he did get a hold of was this photograph. And, uh, again, very, very interesting. Just four months before Roswell. I really love this stuff. And, uh, yeah... With that, that is all for today. Do stay tuned. I'm catching up on a lot of news after being out for almost a week. I'm going through my emails, my messages, new pieces of footage, so stick around, subscribe to me on Facebook and Twitter, and I will see you all back in just a bit. Stay safe, guys.